So today we'll talk about Baker's percentage. Now what is Baker's percentage? It is a way of working out the amount of ingredients in each recipe. Now normally beginners or home bakers would not be using this because most of the time we just use recipes that are already written down. But once you understand Baker's percentage, you will be able to create your own recipes. So a normal bread recipe would have flour, water, yeast and salt as a standard. Every ingredient is always calculated in relation to the flour. So no matter how much flour you use, it will always be 100%. As a general rule, dry yeast would be 1.4% or fresh yeast would be 4%. Salt would be normally 1.8 to 2%. Now some recipes may use more, but 2% is normally the go-to amount. A round number also makes it easier to work out the amount you need. The main variable in a recipe will be the water percentage and this may change from as little as 50% to more than 100 depending what dough you are making. For instance bagels could be 50% or high hydration focaccia could go up to more than 100. So I'll quickly show you how to work out the percentage of a set recipe. You may have read it in a book or you may have seen it in one of my videos. The main thing to work out here is the water percentage because that will tell you how wet the dough will be and how easy or difficult it will be to work with. So a regular loaf of bread might have 500 grams of flour and as I said before that will be the 100%. No matter how much flour you are using it will always be 100%. Now water might be 300 grams, yeast 7 grams and then 10 grams of salt. This is your regular white loaf. So if you get a calculator, so I can't do these things in my head, so to work out the amount of water in relation to the flour, all you need to do is divide the amount of water by the amount of flour. You get 0.6, which is 60%. Same goes for the yeast. You divide the amount of yeast with the amount of flour. 7 divided by 500 will give you 0.014, which is 1.4%. And of course, the same goes for the salt. Now let's say you decide to make a loaf of bread, which will normally be 500 grams of flour, which will of course be 100% of the total amount. But you don't know yet how much in weight, water, yeast and salt you're going to use. But you have decided, for example, that the water content will be 68%. And as we learned before, dry yeast will be normally 1.4%. Salt, we could do 1.8%. These are the things we know. So once again grab your calculator and to work out the amount in grams from a percentage all you need to do is multiply the amount of total flour with the percentage. So 500 grams times 0.68 equals 340 grams. 500 grams times 0.014 equals 7 grams. And of course the exact same applies for the salt. Now that's quite easy right? But this formula here will really help you out in creating a recipe. And this will work for any amount. Let's say for example you are making 20 burger buns and you want them to weigh 100 grams each. And let's say this time you decided that you want the hydration to be 63%. So once we decide our dough hydration percentage, we know, we know the percentage of all the elements, the flour, like I said, will always be 100%, no matter how much you're using. 63% of water, yeast will be 1.4%, and salt will be 2%. So each percentage is a part of the total dough. So to work out each individual element, you need to add together all the parts. So 100% plus 63 plus 1.4 plus 2 it'll give us 166.4. Now we know how many parts we have. Now we work out the total dough weight, which is quite simple. 20 times 100, 20 buns at 100 grams each. Give us two kilos or 2000 grams. So we know how many parts. We also know the total dough weight. Now we need to work out the weight of a single part or a single percent. To do that, divide the total dough weight by the amount of parts, so 2000 divided by 166.4.
which in this case will be 12.019 and so on. So from here, we can work out the amount of flour. So we know that the flour is always 100%. So you multiply one pot by 100, which will give you 1201 grams. You can round it up or down a little bit. One gram won't make much of a difference. So as soon as we have worked out the amount of flour in a recipe, we can calculate all the other ingredients in relation to that amount. So we know that the water will be 63%, so 1201 times 0.63, which in this case will be roughly 575 grams. And the same goes for the yeast and the salt as before. Just multiply the amount of flour by the percentage. And just to see if we are correct, we can add up all the ingredients which in this case resulted 1,999 grams. We lost that one gram because we rounded down some decimals early on, but that's not a big deal. And that's how you write a bread recipe. And this formula will work for any amount and any bread. So let's have a look at dough hydration. Hydration just means the amount of water that you are using in relation to the flour. Normally, I would categorize this as low hydration, medium or normal hydration and high hydration dough. So low hydration dough would be about 50-60%, something quite easy to work with. Then a normal hydration 60-68 gets a little bit more sticky, and high hydration doughs 68 to 100 or even more than 100%. So just give you a few examples of low hydration dough, It'd be like bagels, pretzels, burger buns, something that has quite a tight crumb. So normal hydration, you have your sandwich loaf, some flatbreads, also baguettes. And when it comes to high hydration, you have focaccia, pizza, ciabatta, rye bread, because rye flour absorbs a lot of water. And then again, these rules are not set in stone. You can make bagels with 65% hydration. You can make pizza with 63. You could also make flatbreads which are 68, 69, 70. It all depends on what end result you want. The more water, the more larger bubbles you will have inside your dough. The less water, the more tight the inside will be. I'll show you some real life practical examples of dough hydration. I will make three loaves of bread with the same amount of flour, yeast and salt. The only difference will be water. So start with the first one, 60% hydration. As you can see, I've mixed it all up. It's quite dry, quite flaky. Kneading 60% hydration dough is quite easy as well because it's not sticky. So I just use a regular kneading method. Press down and forwards my right hand. Using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand and repeat. This dough takes no more than five to seven minutes to work. As you can see, it's not very smooth because there's not a lot of water. So pop it into the bowl, leave it to proof. I left it for 45 minutes and I'll do all the loaves for 45 minutes and I'll give them a fold. Now this step can be skipped for 60% hydration dough. Normally folds are used to create more layers in the gluten, but a dry dough like this doesn't really need it. But I'll do the fold just to keep things equal because I will fold the other doughs. And as you can see we are not using any flour, we are folding on the table and dough is not sticking. 60% hydration. Now back into the bowl it goes for another 45 minutes of proofing. Then comes the pre-shaping. Again, we don't have to use any flour. Just tip your dough out. And when I shape a 60% hydration dough, I don't fold it too much. It is not as stretchy. So if you fold it too tight, you might rip the surface. So after the pre-shape, cover it up, leave it for 30 minutes to relax. Now it's final shaping time. I'm going to use this oblong basket for every dough. A very minimal dusting of flour because this dough is not sticky at all. As you can see it's quite easy to handle, it's not sticking. So I'll just flatten it out a little bit, fold in the sides, crossing over and I'll roll it up. Don't have to do this too tight, the dough will keep its shape. Now it can go into the basket, seam side pointing up. I'll leave it to proof for 30 minutes. As you can see, even though the dough has been relaxing and puffing up, it has kept its shape, it's standing up. A higher hydration dough will tend to spread out a little bit more. I'll score it with my razor blade, just do one slash from top to bottom, 
and get it in the oven. And the low hydration also makes it really easy to score. So bake for 15 minutes with the lid on and take the lid off. And you're baking for 15 more minutes, it's quite a small loaf. And that's it, that's a 60% hydration dough. It's not too bad, but let's try 65% hydration. So just as before, flour, water, yeast and salt. Just 5% more water this time. Now give it all a good mix, then tip it out on your table. And you will notice this dough is a little bit more sticky. But we can still use the same method of pressing it against the table and rolling it. And as the hydration percentage increases, the amount of time that you will spend kneading the dough will also increase. So this may take 7 to 10 minutes. And once you finish kneading it, you'll notice that the dough is a little bit more sticky, a little bit more stretchy. Now just as with the previous dough, we'll collect it up into a bowl, cover it up, leave it to proof for 45 minutes. And then give it one fold. To fold this dough, I would use a light dusting of flour just to prevent it from sticking to the table. But look how much softer and stretchier it is. And as you increase the hydration percentage, you can also change up the folding method. Generally, high hydration doughs benefit from more folds and more layers. So I'll just roll this up into a tight roll. And then back into the bowl it goes for another 45 minutes of fermentation. And after that's done, we'll do the pre-shape. And again, using a very small dusting of flour. Now stretch it out, fold it up, cover it, and we'll leave it to rest before the final shape. And again, you can feel the dough is a lot lighter, a lot puffier than the 60% hydration. And this time, you may want to dust your basket with just a little bit of flour. Also dust your dough before shaping. Now you can really feel the gas bubbles inside. Just stretch it out a bit, fold it up, roll it up, like we did before. And now we can roll it a little bit more tightly. Because the dough is a bit more stretchy, it can take more tension. Now pop it in the basket for its final proof, and we're ready for baking. And this dough has increased in volume by a lot more than the previous one. Not only because we added 5% more water, also there's more air inside it, so that adds to the volume. Now scoring it the same way as before, we can feel how soft it is. I'll cover it up, pop it in the oven. Halfway through, we take the lid off. As you can see, this has risen a lot more. Then get it back in the oven to finish baking. And that's your 65% hydration bread. Now, let's look at 70%. At this hydration, you will really start feeling the difference in the dough. And it will take a bit more skill to work this and master it. It will be a lot more wet and sticky. And, if working by hand, you'll use a different kneading method. As you can see, this is a soggy mess at the moment. So to knead the dough like this, we use a stretch and fold method. Pick the dough up by one side, stretch it against the table and fold it over. And this may take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. And it might even be sticky when you finish, but that's okay. Get it in the bowl, cover it up, leave it to proof. The most convenient way of folding this dough is doing it in the bowl. This is called a coil fold. Using wet hands you pick the dough up and you roll it underneath itself. And then turn the bowl and repeat. So what you might want to do for high hydration dough is give it an extra fold or two. So I do shorter proofing intervals and more folds. In this case one extra fold. And when it comes to pre-shaping, I dust it a little bit more with flour because this dough is a bit sticky. And then I use a different pre-shaping method as well create more layers of gluten and more tension in the dough. I will use a stitching method. Fold the bottom up, cross over the sides, then pull the top over to the bottom, stitch it up, roll it tight, we'll cover it and leave it to rest. When it comes to sticky doughs, you need to work quickly and with a very light touch. Now come shaping time, dust your basket with flour again, you don't want the sticking. Also dust your dough a little bit more, then the 60 and 65 percent you will really feel it being wobbly and light and full of air and you should handle it gently but quickly now the shaping method changes for higher hydration dough we use the stitching method make sure your hands are flowers so they don't stick and what you need to do is create more layers and more tension in the dough so fold the bottom up 
across over the sides, pull the top over to the bottom and then stitch it together. This takes a little bit more skill, but once you've done it a few times, you'll get there. So after stitching, roll it tight and then get it in the basket for the final proof. And once it's in the basket, you might want to stitch up the bottom just to help it keep its shape. Now we'll leave it to proof, just as before. And as you can see, this bread is huge compared to the other ones. It's nice and wobbly, full of air, really light. So tip it out carefully into your pan and you can see how soft it is when scoring. You do have to be gentle though. Same as with the other braids, I'll cover it up, bake it halfway through, take the lid off, get it back in the oven, finish baking. And that's the 70% hydration dough. So let's check these all out side by side. So, here's the 60%, 65 and 70 definitely a noticeable difference in volume and when handling them you will feel that and even though the 60% hydration bread has the least amount of ingredients by weight it will feel heavier in the hands than these larger high hydration doughs the more water there is the more it will expand the more air there will be inside it let's cut them open and see what the insides look like now the 60% hydration dough is a denser crumb, which is not a bad thing, it's all up to you what you want to make with your bread. Now the 65% hydration will be a little bit lighter. There's more bubbles that are more spread out, it's definitely softer. And the 70% hydration just bumps it up a notch, you'll get even bigger bubbles and a softer crumb. And if you made it to the end of this extremely long video, I hope you learned something. If you have any questions or suggestions, write them down in comments. If you are new to this channel, subscribe for more videos. And as always, thank you for watching.